Uh, thank you, Mrs. Herman. Uh, I disagree with you at one point. It's very good you brought the respectful and professional here. Um, when someone puts some words in my mouth and say that I said something and this is not true, this is not respectful and it is not professional. And if this is done by someone who is a teacher representing a group of teachers, what kind of principles do we teach our kids? Lie is a lie. And this respectful and professional rule was broken. So my problem is I brought this up only for one particular reason. That I do not have a trust anymore that this can be done peacefully, respectfully, and professionally. Because if someone starts with something like this, what are we going to do? This is just going to continue down the same path. And it's going to be aggravated by additional set of circumstances because, as we know, we are in a terrible financial situation and there is very little, if anything, that we can give. We will have to ask for more than what we can give. I, I just want to like, respond to something Danielle mentioned earlier. In negotiations, what happens is, and I've got a very important point, is that the committee needs to discuss the parameters of the upcoming negotiations, whether it be language changes, whether it's salary and benefits. This occurred in the last negotiations session. The committee set its parameters, set its goals. One was not to spend more than what was, was uh, approved, appropriate. And they stuck to that. You know, there's a lot of contention you know, about whether or not that should occur. But that committee stuck to that. That was one of their goals. Their other goal was to appoint me to be the lead negotiator and stick to those parameters. The point is, regardless of who represents the committee, the committee as a whole holds the responsibility for setting the parameters by which the whole process occurs. It could be money, Carol, how it is now. You could say, Doug, Bill, you guys don't, don't get involved in it, like they do in some other committees. Regardless of who represents the committee, you have your parameters set for you. And, if you, and, and it's very important that whoever's doing the negotiating, unless the entire committee's there, the parameters are the parameters. And you can't deviate, you cannot go beyond that because that's not what you're authorized to do. Unless, you know, that was agreed on the point. But that's an important part of the process. That you, the committee, hold the ultimate decision as to what you're going to offer. What are the parameters of that offer? Is it a one year offer, two year offer? You want to have language in there. All that is decided upon ahead of time. And you give whoever it is the marching orders to say, that's what we want. And and I agree with Carol that the negotiations process should be respectful and professional. And and I'm just gonna say things got out of hand in the last go round. If everyone could back if we could turn the hands of time back, I'd say everyone could do things better. But they are what they are. What happened happened. Hopefully we'll learn from it and improve on it. But in the end, is this committee has voted that it's elected by the entire town to be charged with a legal responsibility for the students and to provide a, a quality education set by the standards set forth by the Department of Ed. That's vital to you. And believe me, I, I carry the ball for the committee and I'll carry it again if asked. But it's the committee that makes that determination as to what's going to be negotiated. And sometimes what's being asked for is in direct conflict with what the other side wants. It's just complete opposites. And the art of negotiations, and it is an art, is to get both sides at some point to agree on the facts, how much money is in play. You know, what are the real, what's really the issues that each side needs to have. If you can get some, parties to, to, to think in those terms and work in those terms, you'll have very successful negotiations. If parties are, are steadfast and hold fast to what they believe in, you're not going to have a fast 
resolution. That's just the way that the art of negotiations are. And right now, we as a school committee, or a school department, don't have a whole lot to offer. You know, we, we, we did make some informal proposals that I thought were fair, that mirrored what other districts in Portsmouth and the middle towns agreed to. But it didn't come to pass. So that's why one of the reasons we're asking for judges to see whether or not we need to negotiate before we should negotiate the issue. I 100% agree with everyone. It's supposed to be respectful and it's supposed to be professional. I don't want anyone to misread what I'm saying here. This is not about starting any wars. It's, it's, it's exactly the opposite. The question is, we do this in public. Are the people going to have a feet to the fire that they will have to behave, hopefully, differently? But the, the prior experience, we negotiated the prior contract in executive session, and we did not avoid all what we are saying here, we are going to avoid when we do it in private. And, and when I just said we could have done things better, I'm speaking for myself. I don't want to speak for anyone else who's previously on the committee or who's on the committee now. I'm speaking for myself. Looking back, I could have done things better myself. And I think that's what we look for when we go about each other and we're talking about any of these folks. But again, it's the committee. You will make that decision at some point, whether we're negotiating with the judge agrees with us or doesn't agree with us. I think Carol mentioned it in her comments. We will be negotiating a contract shortly. And we ask our attorney to draft a letter for 2010-11 and maybe even for this year. To start the process so the committee needs to. One of the questions is, are you going to have it in open session? Among other strategic questions that you need to hash out amongst yourselves. I wouldn't mind negotiating this in executive session, but I think there should be no gag orders and we should inform the public about any proposals which are submitted. That all goes to the rules. It's up to the committee. The committee, what, 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 what ties school committee's hands in, in many cases is they agree to ground rules, but get the gag rule. You, you, both parties agree not to talk about what's going on. And the minute somebody has a small wall, you know, something leaks out, and then, you know, what breaks out, you know, breaks loose. Given that I wasn't part of the negotiations on the previous contract, in in your um, position when you did negotiations, um, if, if it had been in public session, open session, would you have felt that behaviors would have been different? I think nine. I think ninety-nine percent of the time dealing with the local leadership are discussions with corporate the profession. I think what it would do is a public I'm not agreeing or disagreeing with the idea is that it would keep people would remember what you said and also note the changes in tone and direction. <coughs> that that's what people would see more, I believe. More that. Where I, where things really got crazy was when it got beyond us. By us I mean me and Doug and I are talking to Amy and Kristen. When it went beyond that, that's what came out of my out of my hands by that point. And we had negotiated for almost a year prior to August 07. And we had gotten all that language that, that was approved in that uh, arbitrator's award was done prior to August 07, for the most part. So a lot of work was done. The last two items were helped. It was up here in the summer. So I, I think the public would keep everybody honest, I guess is what I'm trying to say, both sides, as far as uh, being consistent. But sometimes in negotiations, one of the ugly parts of it is it goes up and down. You know, it's not always the orchestrator. 